Kia and welcome to this interview for the Religious Diversity Centre Aotearoa New Zealand. My name is Beate Matis and I'm part of the team at the Religious Diversity Centre. We are a national centre of educational research excellence dedicated to fostering appreciation and understanding of religious diversity among all New Zealanders. I am pleased to have a special guest with me today, Rod Oram. Kia ora, Rod, and welcome. Uh, kia ora, Beate. It's lovely to be um, back uh, chatting to you again. <laughs> Rod Oram is a New Zealand journalist and Newsroom Weekly columnist. He attended the Climate Change Conference COP26 in Glasgow two years ago, and uh, as well as the COP27 in Egypt last year. We then interviewed him on these uh, on his experiences, and we had some discussions, and these are still available on our website at www.rdc.org.nz. Rod is also an active member of the RDC Climate Action Group. This RDC Climate Action Group is currently organizing a webinar series of four Wednesday sessions, four Wednesday evenings, with the topic, Building a Climate of Hope. Rod, you are the moderator of three of these four sessions, and you are, you've are you been involved in the preparation of all four sessions. Would you like to introduce them to us? Yes, thank you. Um, we've been working on this for a while because um, amidst all the great complexity um, and the towering challenges that um, not only um, the climate crisis, but the allied crisis of biodiversity loss and um, uh, and the the considerable damage that we humans are doing to earth generally um, and amidst all of those great challenges um, we feel it's really important to be able to um, tap into um, some examples of um, really good activity that's happening uh, progress that's being made and to give people some hope uh, about um, how we might best um, achieve all these um, uh, very big uh, meet all these very big challenges we have so that was the basic idea behind it and um, so um the overall title, as you said, is Building a Climate of Hope, uh, Etu Tamana Ote Ao um, in te, te Reo. Um, and um, we step through this in four ways um, uh, as we progress through the, the uh, four Wednesdays in June. So um, this coming Wednesday, um, June the 14th, um, we are taking a very global view. So the title is Hope for an Endangered Planet. And it's a very, very um, great um, privilege for us to be able to have as our speaker that um, that evening, um, Dr. Uh, Jane Goodall, um, who is um, a, a founder of the Jane Goodall Institute, of course, and she's very, very well known for her uh, her work um, in Africa um, uh, with um, animals and with ecosystems. And um, she's um, also a United Nation, Nations Messenger of Peace is a wonderful title and author of um, her most recent book was The Book of Hope, A Survival Guide for an Endangered Planet, where she um, explores the, those issues at great length. So um, she's our first um, speaker. And then our plan each session is to have some respondents um, who will um, be reflecting on what they've been hearing. And so in the case of that first um, uh, one next Wednesday, it's Dr. Jenny Tapar Daniel, who's indeed co-chair of our uh, Religious Diversity Center Trust Board, and um, Mandira um, Shailaj, who is um, on our Religious Diversity um, Center's uh, Youth Leadership Council. And Kennedy Warren, um, a New Zealand journalist um, who was the founder, founding editor of New Zealand Geographic magazine. And um, he's just um, about to publish his next book um, on, um, on uh, water and oceans, which I'm very eagerly looking forward to. Um, Kennedy's a, a particular friend of mine, and we get off uh, around the country on some great cycling adventures and expeditions from time to time. And actually, Kennedy will be um, joining us from Tahiti because he's um, up in Tahiti at the moment as um, a, an expert leader of some U.S. National Geographic um, 
um, tours in that part of the Pacific. So um, he will be between tours and, and joining us from um, Tahiti for that session. So that's the so, first so one. Yeah, just ask. So if Jane Goodall will be the keynote speaker and then afterwards there will be a reflection with Jane Goodall or is it about what Jane Goodall said? It, it sadly it has to be about um, just what Jane said because of the time difference between us and Africa. Um, we've, we've actually got a pre-recorded um, piece from Jane and um, we, um, because it was just getting too complicated to try to arrange something live with her. Um, and then once we've had um, some discussion from our respondents, we'll then be opening that up to um, uh, our online audience. And we've been getting good registration so far. Um, uh, we're very pleased with the numbers of people who signed up. So I think we're going to have a, a, a good audience. And um, as moderator, moderator, I'll be taking great care to draw in uh uh, comments and questions from our online audience um, to the fullest extent I can. In the because I know the hour is going to whiz by, um, so uh, we're going to make sure we I'm allotting good time for um, for Jane's um, presentation, which is about twenty minutes, and then for the respondents, which will be about twenty minutes, and then um, a good time for Q and A from the audience. Well, that's a seven thirty next Wednesday, the fourteenth of June. Yeah. And then um, the second one in the series, the following June, looks at um, Aotearoa, New Zealand, and um, hope there um, as we address these issues. And that discussion is led by um, Rabbi Dean Shapiro with three um, climate scientists, um, Jim Salinger, uh, Rod Bell and Alexandra McMillan, who respectively are experts on climate, in Jim's case, uh, water, Rod's case, and um, Alexandra on health issues related to climate, which are, are very considerable. And um, so um, that's a slightly different format um, rather than the keynote. Um, I know uh, uh, Rabbi Dean will be saying some um, really interesting things up front, but that's going to be, I think, more of a discussion between um, him and um, those three climate scientists. But again, then um, giving plenty of opportunity for and questions and comments and discussions from our um, online audience. Well, uh, Rabbi Dean was in an interview with us a few weeks ago, and he talked a little bit about 2050 and what he was thinking about and uh, these ideas. So that's also online to just give an idea. Maybe he'll refer to some of these ideas. That will be really interesting. Rabbi Dean from uh, Beth Shalom in Auckland. Yes, absolutely. And um, it's also really um, important that um, we reflect um, many faiths in this. Um, um, and so it's very uh, excellent to have um, Rabbi Dean involved in that. Um, and um, so I think that's going to be a great session. And then we move on to the third one, um, which is hope for the Pacific region. And that's Wednesday, the 28th of June. And um, our keynote speaker there um, is a member of um, the Pacific Climate Warriors Group, um, very effective climate activists um, in the Pacific. And that's um, Mary Moyono Colio. And um, I think she will give us a, a really clear, strong, um, you know, exciting sense of what the Pacific Climate Warriors are up to as a group. Um, over the years that they've been active, um, I've been very impressed about um, how creative they are in, in getting information, getting the important messages across about what um, our Pacific Island neighbors are facing um, in the climate crisis. And um, um, then the respondents um, for, uh, to her comments, uh, again, we have three, um, uh, Dr. Roro Daniel, who's a former Cook Islands Secretary for Health, um, uh, Grace uh, Fakahal, who's a, a law and arts student at Victoria University, and, and Adam Curry, who's um, a climate activist here in New Zealand, um, but also uh, knowledgeable uh, and in, engaged in the Pacific. So he's um, 
variously worked for organizations such as Greenpeace New Zealand and um, Generation Zero here in New Zealand. Um, and um, uh, and so um, Adam comes with a, a very strong background connected with um, the Pacific, um, but also being able to um, bring in a New Zealand perspective into that. So, so that's that's the third session. So it's like going from the world perspective of Jane Goodall further to um, Aotearoa and the Pacific, and uh, or then yeah with Aotearoa New Zealand and beyond with Rabbi Dean, and then we're coming to the Pacific, and uh, then we are going again back to out world. to the world. <laughs> <laughs> and so our fourth session um, is on the fifth of July. Um, with the Right Honourable Helen Clark, our, our former Prime Minister, who of course then went on to be um, the administrator of the United Nations Development Programme for a number of years. And um, Helen has always taken a, a keen interest, um, been very committed on climate issues. And so um, it's now a couple of years ago, um, she was the editor of a book um, uh, called uh, Climate Aotearoa, What's Happening and What We Can Do About It, where um, a number of people contributed um, chapters on various um, aspects of climate. And indeed, I, I contributed one of those chapters on agriculture and climate uh, from a New Zealand perspective. And um, so we're very excited to have Helen involved because um, she um, plays an, an, a number of roles around the world and has uh, truly a global perspective on these issues. And, and, she is the, and she's the patron of uh, the RDC. She is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and um, I'm particularly keen, uh, amongst other subjects, to um, get some of her thoughts, some of her perspectives on the role that the United Nations plays in its very many forms across climate. It's not just the United Nations framework um, on um, climate change. Um, but um, it, uh, obviously the development program um, uh, and many other aspects of the United Nations um, has key roles to play um, in climate too. And um, our three respondents are uh, Professor Bronwyn Haywood from the University of Canterbury, who's um, an IPCC, as in the United Nations, um, uh, 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 science group um, there, the IPCCC, um, uh, and so she's a political scientist at the Un at University of Canterbury and, and has written widely on climate, um, but one of her particular emphasis is um, how young people are responding to um, the pressures of it and the challenges of it. Um, and um, our second respondent is Dr. Hafsa Ahmed, from Lincoln University. Um, and our third is Mike Smith, who's climate co-chair of the EWE Chairs Forum uh, here in New Zealand. So um, we'll be bringing a very um, strong, um, not just a, a, a Maori perspective, but Mike's very involved also um, internationally um, in the work of indigenous peoples on climate. And so for example, um, he was at COP27 um, in Egypt last year. And um, I had a chance to talk to him there about um, that um, Maori connection with indigenous people elsewhere. And it's really fascinating how in recent years, the, um, the knowledge and the perspective of indigenous people has become um, more and more recognized and valued and, and brought more into the foreground on climate issues. So. Um, the IPCCC itself in its reports um, now has extensive chapters um, on those indigenous responses, acknowledging that indigenous people around the world are um, our owners, our guardians um, are, uh, of um, a, a high proportion of um, uh, that scarcest resource of all that we have, which is um, uh, ecosystems and land and waters um, that are relatively unscathed um, by humans so far, but under great pressure, um, as we see, for example, in the Amazon and elsewhere, where there's constantly enormous pressure 
um, on those um, remaining um, largely untouched um, um, ecosystems. And, and so indigenous people um, are under huge pressure to be uh, to um, to be able to hold on to those lands and waters, and so to be able to continue um, to be um, you, you know living in uh, showing us ways in which we can live in in right relationship uh, with those ecosystems. Can you just explain again the three C's because you mentioned it a few times, and I think that you clarified it, but just to repeat it, the three C's that you were mentioning. Uh, uh, on the climate change convention so the climate change convention is the the three c's and and um that's the united nation framework um to which um, essentially every nation in the world has signed up to and and that's the ip um triple c um um is the sorry is the science body within the the UN climate framework. So um, that's uh, what brings all the scientists together um, to write the extensive assessment reports that they do. And and Rod, is it possible? How do you register for the seminars? Um, there is um, uh, a. This is all on Zoom. So the best way is to register through the website. So all the links are on the website and on emails. And if there is any question, people can always get in touch with the RDC and they will be sent the link. And uh, some people have asked me, what about the recordings? Will there be recordings um, during the session? So will, yeah. it, will they be available afterwards? Yes, um, we are very keen to have these as um, um, long life resources that people can look back on. Um, and um, we will um, publish all the details um, once we've got the four assembled and um, um, ready to and links to them that we can publicize. So, yeah, absolutely. Please, please go back. And uh, if you missed it the first time, come back and see them. If you saw it the first time, I think you'll find great value in seeing it having a look through them again. And uh, we very much encourage people to do so. Wonderful. And I think that the topics are really, from, it's from the 14th of uh, June is the start, the first mm -hmm. Wednesday, then the next Wednesday, the 21st of June. That's uh, Hope for Aotearoa New Zealand 2050 and beyond. Mm -hmm. And then 28th of June, so a week later, Hope for a Pacific region. And then 5th of July, will be then the session with um, um, Helen Clark on Hope for Our World. So we'll go in a circle. It's just like almost like going through uh, around the globe. We're starting here and we're coming back because we're starting with also with Jenny Depa Daniel, who is a Maori, and she would certainly give a Fakatoki and uh, some um, Maori perspectives. And uh, then we'll end again with uh, Aotearoa. Is that mm -hmm. The way that I understand it, right? Yes. Yeah. Is there anything that uh, people have to consider? Shall they bring their questions with them, or what would you like? Would you like them to ask a lot of questions during after the sessions? Oh yes, very much encourage people to do so. Um, but we're, crucially, we um, are offering something um, that is not always the case in climate. Um, it's not just the question of hope. Um, but we will be exploring um, at various times and in various ways through these um, four sessions um, the role of um, our, our faith um, and our spiritual relationship uh, with the living earth um, and, our, um, and our understanding that we are very um, dependent um, members of those complex ecosystems, you know, we're not in charge as often as we humans sometimes think we are. Um, and um, that's why um, indigenous perspectives are really important because there's that always that strong sense of that interdependence um, and that mutual dependence between humans and um, the, the living world in which they live. And um, Speaking personally, I've felt for quite a long time that in these enormous challenges, um, we won't do enough about all these things 
unless we care enough. And probably we won't care enough until we really understand, come to understand not only how um, fundamentally important um, you know, our whole life depends, it, you know, it's our life support system, the living earth, mm -hmm. and how important it is to us. Um, but until we have some sense of our relationship, a different kind of relationship, a more symbiotic relationship, a less damaging relationship um, with those living systems, um, um, with um, other, um, you know, um, it, it, you know, in the rich diversity of ecosystems, um, in biodiversity, um, in the wonderful um, vast array of animals and organisms um, and plants and the like in those ecosystems. And um, so it's going to be a wonderful part of the discussion, I think, is going to be having some perspectives on that from um, a number of different faiths um, and traditions. And uh, Rod, uh, you are a member of the RDC Climate Action Group, the, the group that thought of this webinar series and decided on it and is organizing it. Can you tell us a little bit about the work and what makes it special? You just mentioned religion, which is uh, and the interconnectedness with our, within people who are of a belief system. Um, can you tell us more about this work and what makes it so special on the RDC Climate Action Group? There are um, obviously um, an enormous array of organizations and people um, that are working very hard on climate issues. And, and we each bring um, our own particular skills and knowledge and passion to that. And um, so I think that what we're contributing, um, particularly from an interfaith respect perspective. So for example, in the Anglican church, we have you know some wonderful young leaders on climate um, and they're doing a wonderful job but i think it it's that it's the religious diversity in this um which is so fascinating because um this sense of um creation uh, of our spiritual relationship um with the living earth um finds expression across all faiths in in ways i think it's one of the areas of great commonality between faiths and, and a great territory for us um, to work together, not only to solve these issues, but also to better understand each other's faith. So I, I think that's the really the distinctive thing that we bring to this. Um, and um, that's why we're really pleased to have been able to um, organize this um, four part webinar. And if anybody um, who attends these seminars wants to join the RDC uh, Climate Action Group, would that be possible? Would they could they apply for it? Oh yes, yes. It's uh, hardly an exclusive club. <laughs> <laughs> we we're, we're very keen to have uh, as many members as possible, so we can learn more from each other and do more together. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's wonderful. So I think that we're all looking forward to this uh, series of uh, four sessions, uh, the webinars on climate and um, a call for climate action and building a climate of hope. So thank you so much, Rod. And this has been really interesting. And um, we'll, we might have to um, ask somebody to give some feedback afterwards. And We would very much <laughs> welcome feedback um, of whatever nature. Um, because it's only through the feedback that we learn how to do more and better. Um, so yes, please, to the feedback. <laughs> I just think when you say it's the feedback that we learn, it's almost like a plant. The feedback of the plant yeah. is if you don't give enough or too much uh, water, they, the plant will tell you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Rod. And uh, wishing you all the best for this uh, for the webinar series. And hopefully you have many attendants. Yes, thank you. And um, wonderful to talk to you again and look forward to the next time. See you. See you. Bye-bye. Thank you.